This is the most confusing system I've ever worked on. It's just took me literally three hours and I still haven't got my head around exactly what's going on. We've got, from what I can tell, actuators under the floors controlling radiators upstairs. We've got an underfloor heating manifold that I'm here to replace, but we've only got one two port valve on it. So I'm gonna to have to put another one in over here. However, when we turn the underfloor heating manifold on, it doesn't turn the heating upstairs on either. So I really do not know what is going on with this system. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. This video is, you're gonna see during the video the amount of times I say this job is a nightmare, but it genuinely was an absolute nightmare. I've never seen a heating system like it before in my life. There was so many different ways we could have altered it to get it to work. But as you'll see in the video, not everything goes to plan and we uncover something that I've never ever seen before in my life. And it still baffles me now talking about it um, because it just doesn't make any sense. I get the idea behind it, but it's just not what you would do. Anyway, you'll see it in the video. Also, during the video, uh, Unilight have done me a deal on my favourite, the SLR 1750, and they've done a deal throwing in the new OB, what is it? OP3B bag. So, keep an eye out in the video for a deal on the SLR 1750 and the bag, exclusive to all of you lot. Link will be in the description below. Um, it, it can't be replicated anywhere else. You lot are doing it just for me. It is officially the MJ Tiff bundle. So keep an eye out for that. Hope you enjoy the video. If you do, give the channel a subscribe, give a like, give a thumbs up, drop me a comment below. I'm really trying to push now to try and get 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, we went off to a flyer at the start of the year um, and we're nearly there. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, it doesn't cost anything, hit the subscribe button, get subscribed. You're not gonna miss any content that I put out. We've got some big things coming up. I'm recording this in the van and I've had to turn the engine off and the air conditioning off. It's red hot outside, it's Saturday afternoon. I'm beginning to sweat because it's so hot in here. So I'll leave you to it. Hope you enjoy the video and I shall catch you soon. I have just come across the most confusing, baffling underfloor heating system with rads upstairs set up that I've ever done. And three hours in, I'm still trying to work out what valve does what, what turns what off. Just don't know where to begin with it in all honesty. So let me run through exactly what we've got. We got called out to replace this underfloor heating manifold straightforward enough job what we've got inside here is heat miser touch screens just to do the downstairs underfloor heating upstairs is radiators downstairs is underfloor heating so in principle we can take this manifold out put a new one in change this change the stats inside there reconnect them to the system and all should be well so that's what I priced up to do. Bought all the stuff from Snug Underfloor Heating, got it all here. So I've come out today to begin doing what we needed to do. I thought I'd just run the system up and check what's going on. First problem I noticed, the hot water two port valve has got no control over it. There's no time clock to turn the heating on and off. So I thought maybe upstairs it's working on the cylinder stat. So I run the heat off the cylinder, nothing. It's not kicked in, so they've got no hot water at the minute. The woman said it just randomly gives them hot water as and when. Two port zone for the heating. This is your flow and returns for the heating. They come across here to here. So in principle, I was gonna put a two port zone valve on the underfloor heat inside and a two port zone valve on the upstairs radiator so they can be completely isolated from the underfloor heating. If you want this on separately to that, your zone valves work, all is well and good. Perfect, I thought, yeah, fine, we can do that. Now, this is the weird bit, the strange bit. Let me take you up and show you just what's going on with the rads. We'll use this room for an example. We've got a rad here, thermostatic valve on there. You'd think it's just on the heating loop, the heating side of the system. We've got a touch panel here, an underfloor heating style touch panel here. If we turn this up, this rad gets warm. So obviously there's an actuator under the floor here feeding that rad. Same again with this one. 
we turn this up, this rad will come on. Gets better, however, no control over this towel rail, just comes on whenever the underfloor heating or one of these rads is on up here. This one, there's a touchpad here that does nothing. This rad is teed into this towel rail. So whenever the heating comes on, there's no control over this. This comes on, so this comes on, whether it be the underfloor heating downstairs or one of these rads up here. And then finally, this rad here, they've all got TRVs on, this rad here, turn this stat up and this rad will come on. So that tells me it's actuators or valves under the floor feeding each radiator. I've never, I personally have never seen that before, ever. And then up there, I've got pressurised up water cylinder with no control over the turning the heat, turning the hot water on and off. That just sort of comes on randomly. So, my, my initial idea of just replacing this, replacing the control box, obviously these are the, the cables feeding into here for your actuators, that's not too much of a problem. What I was gonna do was put your two port zone valve there, two port zone valve there, that's gonna do upstairs, that's gonna do your underfloor heating straightforward but now we've got those valves upstairs <sighs> i just don't know what to do for the best so what i'm going to do i think i've just been mulling it over a little bit what i'm going to do is drain the system i'm going to cut in two lever valves just here cut them in isolate the underfloor heating side of stuff take this out get the new manifold on get the tails connected into it with the pump on it etc and then when my electrician comes tomorrow we can work out exactly what's what you know worst case scenario we can put the new uh, actuators into this or trace them back to wherever they've got to go and get it up and running tomorrow when nick the electrician's here and then we can work out exactly what's what but it seems to be a bit of a dead day at the minute i've been racking my brains for hours trying to get my head around what's turning what on and what isn't so to be a little bit productive drain it down cut them in and start a fresh here so got the hose connected into this manifold now i'm just going to put it on there onto the drain off open it up completely drain this side and then just attach them two lever valves up there and then it just means i can refill the heating system upstairs and then hopefully by some miracle the hot water will begin heating itself back up but at the minute i'm just a little bit baffled by it all so we've drained the manifold down, I've drained the heat and I've put these two lever valves just literally low level here, just so that I can work on this little bit and we know that bit up the top and upstairs can do whatever it needs to do. So I took the pump off, took the blending valve off. So what I'm gonna do, I've just labeled these up or gone over where the labels were. I'm gonna whip these actuator heads off, put them tidy up there out of the way, get this manifold off cut the pipes down and then we can begin to make the other manifold up there's going to be a couple of ports spare on this one but that's not a problem because leave them capped off and then we can work back that way but at least now after a proper proper stressful morning i just couldn't and i still can't i still can't understand exactly what's going on with it um why the heat in, why the hot water is not independently switchable um but i'll I just wanted to make a little bit of headway today because I'm conscious that I've got my electrician booked in tomorrow to go through all of this. He doesn't know what he's coming up against yet. I've just rung him until we've got an underfloor heating to swap some stats over and rewire. Um, so he's not going to thank me a lot tomorrow, I don't think, but I just needed to get a little bit of a headway on it. So we can cut these off, we can get these out, just obviously undo them off there and off there. Uh, pull, pull them forward, obviously labeling them up one i'll mark the bottom ones because the top ones are labeled mark the bottom ones and then when we get that one into position obviously we've got to mount it a little bit lower because we're going to be cutting these off along there to get our new fittings on um, mount it and then once they're connected in once the loops are connected in we can then build off the side with the pump and then work back where we need to but yeah it's been a bit of a stressful morning you know sometimes when you stand looking at a job and you're just gazing into fresh air that's exactly what i was doing earlier so you've got the bottom ones disconnected now the top ones i've just slackened off hand tight i could have just cut them straight off with the cutters but i'd rather take my time with this bit because i don't want any issues when i put the other manifold on just trying to connect it up obviously we're going to use the new nuts and olives and inserts but sometimes it's best to just take your time on it 
So we get these we get these undone here. We'll get the actuators off the top. Get this off the wall, and then we can get the frame for the new one on. Right, we're making some headway now. I've got the manifold strapped onto the wall now, so I can begin tightening all the valves in and getting the pump on and into position. And then we can begin getting the pipe working. What I'm going to do is obviously cut the top off to suit. Uh, where's number one? There is. Put that behind. Cut it to suit here. Put the new fittings in supplied by snug and then get it connected up so we're getting these in now i've got one two three four five zones in this is the sixth zone as you can see so what we do is just neat making it a lot more neater to be fair so what we do is just pop this one in here i always mark it an inch or so higher cut it off like so not all these are supplied by snug get your nut on it Get your nut on it, your split olive, pop that on, and then the insert, got two little rubber beads on the insert, and then obviously a rubber bit at the top. So we pop that on, push it into position, and the manifold, squeeze it up, and then just tighten it up. As simple as that. So we've got a few more to do on this manifold. Got the return somewhere here, always mark them up as I always say. So yeah, there's the return. So we get the return into the bottom and then uh, got another zone to go on and then these three are just gonna leave blank, I'll blank them off. And then once these are all done, we can then get the pump on the end and uh, start moving forward that side. So got the manifold now set on the wall there. I'm going to connect this up tomorrow when the electrician's here, but I've just fired the boiler up. So the heat two port zone valve is now open. So we're getting heat to here. Obviously we've got that shut off there. The original pump's running, so I haven't disconnected it yet. But if I take you upstairs, and I'll show you exactly what I mean with these random valves that are working the, the rads. So, all the rads are off, so that rad's off, the rad in there is off, this one is on because we've got the touch panel turned right up, just to sort of prove a point basically, so this is on, red hot, all the others are cold, the towel rail's on, and the towel rail in here is on, hot, and because this is fed off that towel rail, that's hot, so there's no way of isolating that. But I just don't understand it. It's just basically telling me that there's a, a valve under the floor that this is controlling. So we call for heat here. The valve under the floor, wherever it is, opens up and allows heat to that rad. Which is exactly the same as what this has done. Rad's red up because we've turned that up. If we turn that down, it will shut that rad off. And I can't even pick up under the floor where the valves are. Yeah, that rad's 70 degrees. The tie rails are on, whereas this rad, stone cold. For now, we've got that shut off there, so we can connect onto that tomorrow when Nick the electrician's been to work out what he's gonna do with this. Worst case scenario, we know that if we come off this into here, we know that that's gonna work. Wire that pump into there, across to that, but I just wanted to ideally get rid of that control center, but if that's controlling the underfloor heating actuators but also going up and doing them ones that are somewhere under the floor then we may end up having to keep that right we're day two on this strange weird heating system job nick the electrician is working out what's what seeing what's going on but to be honest fair play he sort of said to me the way this system is is just completely strange so what we're going to do is put it back We've got the new heating manifold on, new pump. We're gonna put the new actuator valves on and connect it back to how it was yesterday when we knew it worked um, and then work back from there basically because I'll show you what I found upstairs. So yesterday evening when I got in, I sp spoke to uh, Grant Copper Skills. He knows his heating systems inside out. He said to me, this system with these touch panels to him, there's going to be a manifold upstairs somewhere feeding these radiators. Now, 
I looked around yesterday, could not find one at all. However, this morning, I have found, behind here, I have found this radiator is controlled from that touch panel over there. So I stuck my head inside here, and what we've got, I've never seen anything like this before. There's an actuator feeding that rad. So when that touch panel start calls for heat, it obviously opens that up and begins to work. But like Nick said downstairs, he's never seen anything like this before. And fair play to him, he said, I don't want to get too involved with it because I don't know it. So what we're going to do is revert back with all the new manifold, the new pump, etc. revert back to yesterday where we knew it worked and then work forward from that. It might be a case of speaking to the customer and saying, look, this is where we're at with this. Um, we can't go any further forward without getting floors or trying to find valves because this one here is accessible, obviously, but the one in there, I think it could be under the floor or anywhere. So we're going to do that and then hopefully put a time clock on for the hot water so it's controllable because at the minute there's no control over the hot water either. But yeah, it's just a bit of a nightmare, really, really odd. So what I'm doing now, I'm just re-piping this manifold up and it's just connected that into there just off these lever valves here. We're putting nothing else in here at the minute. So we're basically gonna replicate the system as it was, but with the new ancillaries, the new manifold, new pump, uh, new actuators, and then work back from there because it's just a little bit all over the place with it. So spoke to the customer, told them how we're gonna do it, and then assess it again when it's up and running. So we've now got the heating system back up and running in essence, exactly how it was to begin with. So let me show you. We've got the new manifold in, we've connected all the underfloor heating back up into that. New pump, the customer was concerned with the old pump that is in the skip, I think now. So we've got a new pump, new uh, manifold. We've got the, uh, we've got the lever valves here. Um, I was gonna put a Kimbo T in here um, just to, to circulate and, and use it as a, like an inline bypass, but I haven't because I just wanted to get all this back up and running as it was before. Nick the electrician's just gone off. We've worked out that the hot water from what we can gather is working off the cylinder stat. When the temperature in the cylinder drops, it opens up the, the two port for the water and then allows the boiler to fire. But they've got no control over it. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put a little time clock here that they can override and you know set times for the water to come on because Otherwise, it's just coming on and off, on and off all day, which is great because you're always going to have hot water should you ever use it. But there's only two people in the house, so they just want some control over it. So we've got that. We've got that going in. We've got all this back up and running. As I said, this heat miser is all sort of low voltage stuff, so we can't fit the new snug stats because they're 240 and all this system is low voltage, 12 volt stuff for the touch panels for the stats that are on the walls here. Um, so we're gonna leave those because at least now we know it's up and running and we can explain it to the customer. This one is dead. We don't know what that was in for. Um, we now know that these are obviously working the rads. I think I've already showed you. This actuator valve that's behind there. So now we know it is just these little actuators that are controlling it, but as I said for this one, whether you get the carpet up and there's an access panel where the actuator head is, I don't know. And without really digging in and, and starting to get floors up, which the customer doesn't want, I don't want to be doing that. Again, stack there, turns this rad on, we know it turns them on and off, but uh, I don't want to be getting everything up. It just means that the towel rails, it just means the towel rails are going to come on as they do. Um, it, it's basically what I've just gone around the whole system, worked out what it is. So we've managed to do that and now I can just explain it in more detail and the customer can understand and get used to how these stats work. But yeah, as for that, I mean, Nick, my electrician, he, he looked over it. We've wired that and we've wired the pump in. He's gonna put the clock there, but fair play straight away. He went, all this, he went, all this is beyond what he's used to doing, you know? And to be honest, 
I don't blame them. I'd rather know from the off. So if ever there's an issue with this, we'd have to get a heat miser approved installer to come and work out exactly what's what because it's things like that just hanging out of there and you take this cover off the wiring inside is is unbelievable so yeah so what we're going to do now is finish getting this done then i'm going to put a cleaner into the system leave it in overnight then we'll be back tomorrow to flush the system through get it all cleaned out and then because we're going to be running low temperature underfloor heating uh we put mc10 the biocide uh, inhibitor that's made for low temperature stuff so we'll put that in but yeah for now as long as we're all up and running as it was before tidied up and looking a lot better we can get this uh, time clock on and we're making a little bit of headway to cut a very very long story short that's all working fine not a problem this heat miser uh one is an absolute nightmare we've had to bypass the what well, we bypassed the hot water all, all the controls all the, the controller hidden somewhere under yeah. the floor or something so we chased a wire back here that the way that the hot water was coming on on and off it was telling us there was a, a controller somewhere we've chased the wire all the way back up through the ceilings through the roof into voids and what the only thing we can think of is the hot water controller has been buried under the floor in it yeah or buried under the floor or buried behind walls or something because we cannot find it for love nor money so what nick's done we've put a, a secondary one or now it's the only one we've put one in here but we've had to alter the the, the cabling in there to basically make it work from here up to the cylinder stat then we can turn this on and off in in essence she's got the same system as what she had to start with but modernized here and we can now at a later date come and alter it if need be to get it up and running how she would want it or how it should be but with the the valves and the actuators feeding m3 radiators it's been an absolute nightmare so what i'm going to do now is get a cleaner in the system um, while it's running through what it's got to do get a cleaner and leave that in for a couple of days and then come back on thursday um and see what we can do with it but yeah it's been an absolute nightmare isn't it Nick? yeah but you're now the underfloor heating don't guy don't he's my go-to guy now for wiring up underfloor heating he doesn't Hello, know it Sean. who is Hi, it Sean. Hi Sean. So Sean, what companies you work for? He don't. Oh, he don't. He's a dosser. He's a dosser. Apparently Nick's mate, Sean, does bathrooms in Coventry, yeah. Coventry way. Yeah. So shout out to Sean. He's been wanting a shout out for ages. He probably won't see it because it's on a video about underfloor eating. <laughs> but <laughs> shout out to Sean. Nick will tell you to watch it. So yeah, Nick's now my, officially my underfloor heating guy. Whenever I've got underfloor heating to do, he's going to come and do it. No. Because uh, he knows it like the back of his hand now. Of course. Look at him running for the I'm van. He's off. Cheers, Nick. Right, I know I keep saying it, Nick's just gone, but uh, absolute legend for sorting this out. We've, we've done what we can do to try and simplify it for the customer. Um, it's not the, the, the way that I wanted to do it with the, the zone valves up here, but at least now we can completely isolate the underfloor heating and we know the rads upstairs are controllable bar for the two towel rails, which she knows about and she's happy with. So without trying to cut in more zone valves here and getting onto all this low voltage uh1 heat miser nightmare then you know but i've said to the customer if, if anything else goes wrong with this it's it's a major major job so we've got it working for them as best we can what i'm going to do now is get my little water catching bucket underneath here drop the uh, water out this the ad magnum clean i'm going to use some of this uh, i've got sent this uh, radiant yeah, central heating cleaner. I'm going to pop this in, leave it in for a couple of days, see how we get on with it. Let's drop this out, get some cleaner in, get packed up, and leave that to do its magic for a day or so. So we just drop the bung at the bottom of the Magna Clean, let the air out, and it's a pretty tight one. Do that back up. And let's get some of this cleaner in. We'll just whip this top off first, make sure all the water's out from this. Into this little folding bucket, proper handy they are. Fair, system looks not too bad. So let's put the bung back in the bottom, otherwise the cleaner will be coming straight out again. Like so, and then, so this one will treat 500 millilitres of this cleaner will do, 130 litres in volume, 16 rads, 250 square metres of underfloor heating. So it'll be fine for our system. So, let's pop that in there. 
like so. Tighten it up a little bit and turn the two valves around the side back on. So with this uh, Radiant C5 heat and cleaner in the system, we'll leave this running for a day or so um, and then we'll come back, not tomorrow, Thursday, get it flushed out, get the whole system flushed through, get a thorough flush on it, get a mains clean through the whole system, make sure it's perfect, get some inhibitor in it and then this system, <laughs> in principle, is done. But what a headache it's been. So it's been a couple of days now since we've been on this job sorting out the manifold, hot water, underfloor heating, time clock, etc. What I did before we left last time was put some cleaner into the system. So it's been two days now. They've been running the system up periodically. System cleaner's been in doing its thing. So I'm just in the process now of rigging up the magna cleanse. I think I mentioned this before. I picked this table up from Screwfix. It's a Mac Tools one. It's like 40 quid, but it's perfect as like a little base to put everything on especially when you're doing system flushes so we've got that set up i'm just going to shut this off whip the magna clean unit off put the ad adapter onto the ad magna clean fitting and then we can run everything through the magna clean system we'll leave it running for a, a couple of hours we've got the cleaner in it so we know it's been doing its thing for a couple of days um, then we can go around start shutting rads down I've showed a complete system flush before. I'll put a link up into the top. If you've never seen one done before, follow that link and it will show you exactly in depth what I'm doing. But for today, I'm just gonna show you, you know, a few of the little processes of doing it. So we'll turn the heating off for now, quickly whip that off, get it back on running, so it's all running through the magna cleanse. I will be putting a thorough flush on it afterwards and mains flushing the whole system before we put the inhibitor in. So the magna cleanse, we we'll do all the system cleaning with the magnets, etc., and then we'll completely flush it through with a thorough flush. So let's get it connected up. It is as straightforward as just shutting the two valves off here, and then what we will do is take the pressure off it just on the top. We've got the, the tray on the bottom, so that catches any water that's going to come out. We'll just take the pressure out of it so that when we whip it off, it's not. Uh, it's not full, we'll even pop the bottom off it as well, just to take that little bit of water out. There we go, just a bit stubborn. So let's put the AD one on, like so. So because we're coming down off the flow, so it's gonna come through here and out here, that one will be connected onto this hose, in through the bottom, out through the top, back onto that, and then into the boiler. So easy as that. We've got that off there, that off there. We'll just make sure the rods are clean as they are. So we'll screw them in. So they're off. Let's just put some, turn these valves back on. You may see the colour of the water in these hoses. I don't think it's too bad to be honest. There we go, I'll open them up. It's a little bit, a little bit, but not not too much. So let's pop the boiler back on and get it running up. So we're up and running now through the magma cleanse unit. It's coming from, as I say, the fittings on the return side of the boiler. It's coming in here, as I said, directly through the magma cleanse, back out into the boiler. So everything that's coming out of that system is now coming through these two big magnets. And to be honest, there wasn't a great deal in there, but what we will do, we'll still go around shortly, give it an hour, hour and a half or so, agitate the radiators, get the rattler on it, make sure we're getting all the crap out of the rads. Obviously the underfloor heating, what we'll do, we'll shut the upstairs rads off, push everything through the underfloor heating, 
one loop at a time so we know that's done and then we know every single rad's done every loop of the underfloor heating's done then after a good few hours we can put the thorough flush on it get the mains water flushing all the chemicals out everything out of the system and then we can put the mc10 biocide inhibitor in that is because obviously we've got underfloor heating and it runs at a lower temperature so the biocide stuff will work with the low temperatures and the heating circuits which are obviously upstairs so join me in an hour or so and we'll see how we're getting on so the system's been up and running now for two two and a half hours a little bit of crap come through the pipes you know bit of dark water coming through but what we're going to do now is go around and agitate the radiators upstairs with the what do they call it vibra clean with the vibra clean on the end of the drill some people put a sock over the end of it personally i've never had a problem with it marking rads or anything like that so we're all good we'll do it like that uh what i'm going to do is turn the underfloor heating off now and obviously turn all the radiators off upstairs bar four one which we're going to agitate let's turn this circuit off that's that uh, yeah, bar for one that we're going to go upstairs and agitate and then work our way through each of the radiators, rattling them. Getting any magnetite or whatever that's floating around in the system, we can get it out. Uh, she's been turning them down, I think. So with this rad here, we've got them all turned off now. We're coming to start on this rad. It's just a case of putting it onto hammer and then working your way along the bottom of the rad up the veins of the rad and then back along the bottom and what i'll do i'll get the thermal image in and you'll see i don't to be fair it's not showing any debris sometimes you get like a bit of an arc across the bottom where the debris and the magnetite and the gunge and the sludge is, is catching but to be fair these are all pretty good but we'll still go around rattling them anyway and see how we get on So now we've got the full manifold underfloor heating system completely flushed through. I've done every individual rad upstairs, rattled them all with the Vibra Clean, got all the crap out of as much as we can. To be honest, I don't think there's going to be a lot in there. I think I've already said, because I haven't seen much floating around. But we'll leave that on for another 20 minutes or so. It's been on now for, where are we up? Four hours, four-ish hours. So that's doing its thing. While I'm outside just sorting through my thorough flush stuff, getting it made up, because we're going to mains flush that system in there, get all the chemicals out of it, get the cleaner out of it, and then we can get ready to put the biocide in. Um, so I'm just out here in the sun making this up. Uh, while we're here, Unilight have done me a bit of a deal for my, as always, favourite SLR 1750. There was a deal last year, I think I was knocking them out at 50 quid, cheapest you'll find them. So Unilight have done me a cracking little deal, MJ Tiff bundle, this and this should be 150, 160 quid, I think. So for that, for, for the SLR 1750 and the new OP3B bags, which I use to put all my fittings in from a thorough flush stuff. Um, meant to be 160 quid for them too. I think they're doing it for 85 quid now. I'll put a link in the description below, but Unilight always sorted me out. That allows me to sort you lot out. So 85 quid, you get a nice handy little bag with a little carabiner thing on the side and the best light that I've got in the arsenal. It's got a power bank, cracking light, SLR 1750. So yeah, I'll put the link in the description for that below. But back to this, we'll get this made up and what I'm going to do with this is connect this into the system. Then the dump hose from my thorough flush also goes through the magna cleanse just so if it catches any crap coming out, then magnets will get it. So we'll get this made up and then we can switch the systems over and start mains flushing through the system. So what I've done now is turn the heating system off, turn the hot water system off. So we're going to disconnect the magnet clean, open this up, let the pressure out, and then we can isolate these two valves, turn these off because we're going to attach back on here with the thorough flush, put the thorough flush unit there, put the magnet cleanse unit outside because it's going to catch whatever's dumped out. So let's switch this over and then start getting it mains flushed. So we're now flushing through the hose which is going through the magna cleanse unit so that is catching everything that's coming out of the system dirt wise and magnetite wise but we've got the thorough flush on now so it remains flushing through the whole system we've got it rigged up to where the ad filter goes the same sort of principle as when we put the magna cleanse unit on but this one is the mains flush so this is coming from the outside tap around the corner in 
pressure reducing valve just to keep on check of things and then it goes through the thorough flush system and what we can do with this is switch the direction that it flows around the system by doing that so that's all good and then that's the outlet the dump hose so i have gone into more depth on this on a previous video i'll pop a link up into the corner if you want to know the ins and outs of how it works we don't want to keep explaining it in every video so hence the link above and you can do some research on that well i think i explained it pretty well in it um, but yeah we'll leave this now to do its thing again we'll shut the underfloor heating manifold off we'll go and shut the rads off and have this system flowing through each individual rad one at a time to make sure every single rad is clean then we'll come down and we'll shut off the different loops on the underfloor heating system so we can flush that loop then that loop then that loop so every single loop pipe everything on this system is going to be flushed with clean water from the mains with the thorough flush unit so we're right further on in the day now we have got every rad flush we've got all the underfloor heating flushed and i've just done a pro check again i'll have shown this on my previous video so if you've gone back and watched that you'll know exactly the process of doing this pro check but i've got it lined up there just had the results come in if you can see that we haven't put the inhibitor in it yet because we're still finishing the flush off inhibitor recommended corrosion pass ph levels pass insufficient inhibitor detected top up required so we know that we know we've got to put inhibitor in it we're going to put the mc10 in it right at the end corrosion level is low no further action required ph level okay no further action required so the pro check has told us that the system is perfect once we've got the inhibitor in it we're good to go so we can begin now finishing this uh mains flush off reconnecting the uh, ad magna clean and then that's where i'll put the inhibitor into there and then we know the system is good as gold so yeah ad pro check doing what it needed to do um, we know now the system is completely clean so that's all the systems now disconnected i've popped the magna clean unit back on there we've got where is it we've got the magnet ready to go on but i'm just going to add now the mc10 bio side because we've got the underfloor heating and it runs at a lower temperature obviously this inhibitor works alongside that so just enough in there to get the lid back on like so tighten that in a little bit will come out that's good there we go give that a wipe down we'll get the heating system back up and running get all this tidied up now and get the job finished off completely run through with the customer exactly what we've done exactly what we've changed show them how the stats work and where they individually shut off what rads now that i've got it through my head and and whatnot and also now they've got the new time clock to do hot water to be honest i'll be glad to see the back of this job all done everything what we said we was going to do we've got done we've added the clock in as i said so yeah i'll be glad to get this one done dusted and uh, finished off so hope you've enjoyed it if you have as always hit the like button hit the subscribe button we're heading towards that thirty thousand mark on the subscribers it'd be mega to reach it pretty soon so yeah we're just about done yeah.